Let's now move on to computing color histograms. Again, we'll use matplotlib for plotting, argparse for command line arguments. We have our imutils function here for just a handy way to convert matplotlib channel ordering to OpenCV channel ordering and vice versa. CV2 for our OpenCV bindings. We'll then parse our command line arguments. We only need a single switch here, image, which is the path to our input beach image residing on disk. And from there, we load the image from disk. Let's now split our image into its respective channels. So calling cv2.split is going to result in each of the individual blue, green, and red channels. And we're gonna work, the reason we do this is because we want to explore how to compute histograms for each of the channels individually, and also jointly in two dimensions and three dimensions. So here we initialize a list with our color names, and then we're gonna create this figure here for what I call a flattened color histogram. Along the x-axis, we'll plot the number of bins, and the y label will be the number of pixels that were put into a specific bin. So here we loop over each of the blue, green, and red channels, and for each one, we're gonna compute a histogram for the channel. Here's the channel that we wanna compute the histogram for. We wanna compute the histogram for the zeroth channel of the image, which is trivial because each channel, by definition, only has one entry. We don't have a mask, so we set that to none. We have 256 bins, and pixel values will fall into the range 0 to 256. We'll then plot the color histogram and then set our limits and then display it to our screen. So let's see what this looks like. So I want to explain this in detail as we go along. So I'm going to execute this script and ignore this figure for now. We'll come back to it. But here we have our input image. This is our RGB representation of the beach image. And then we have the plots for each of the red, the green, and the blue channels. So let's break this down and make sure we understand what's, what's going on here. I'm gonna open up just a sample image to keep this open. So looking at this, you'll notice that most of the red pixel values are towards the darker range. That makes sense, right? Because clearly in this input image, there's a ton of blue from the water, from the sky. There's a ton of green from the greenery over here in the trees. We're not really getting a lot of really bright reds. So that's why most of the red pixel values kind of fall here. They're very dark. We don't really see a lot of reds. Most reds you'll see are probably coming in through this brownish region over here in the tree trunks. Most of our green values are kind of mid-range green values really in this range right in here. So they're mid-range values and they correspond to the green up in these trees and maybe there's a little bit of green down here in the ocean water as well. Our blue values on the other hand are really, really bright and that corresponds to the bright blue ocean, the blue in the background and this really bright blue sky. So that's why you see these really, really large bright blue values. But looking at this though, we're only looking at the channels individually. So we've, we've plotted each of the red, green, and blue channels individually. Is there a way to like jointly examine the channels together, either in a 2D or a 3D way? The answer is yes. And when you do that, it's going to look like this. And I'm going to explain how we construct this plot right now. So let's create a new figure. And we're going to add three plots to it. And we're going to compute a histogram a 2D histogram for the green and blue channels together, which when plotted is going to look like this. But let's see how we get there. We're gonna compute a histogram for two channels. So we pass in the green channel and the blue channel. Again, keeping in mind that when we called cv2.split, we split the image into its respective channels in BGR ordering. We're gonna compute histograms for the zeroth and one channel which we pass in here. We don't have a mask, so we'll leave that as none. And then here is the dimensionality of our histogram. It's 32 by 32, which means there's going to be six, or there's going to be 1024 total entries in this histogram. And it's going to look like a matrix. It's going to look like this. And what this histogram is doing is counting the number of times that a pixel intensity falls into the bin, say 20 along the green and like a blue value of zero. So to count the number of times that happens. Then we'll say, all right, let's count the number of times that a pixel intensity falls into the bin 10, but then has this blue value and bin 20. So it's a 2D histogram. That's why it looks like this matrix. 
And that's exactly what we're doing here. So the limits of these pixel intensities are gonna fall into the range zero to 256 for each of the respective channels. And then we plot the 2D histogram for green and blue, and then we do the same thing for green and red, as well as blue and red. And finally, we'll display the shape of the 2D histogram, which again, the histogram is represented as a 2D array. We flatten it, and then that'll give us the shape, the overall number of values in the histogram itself. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna show you the output here. When we run this script, we're gonna get a 2D histogram. It's gonna have 32 by 32 bins, which would be a total of 10, 24 values. And the plot here would look like this. So values on the darker end of the spectrum means there's very, very few pixels binned to that region. And if it's kind of brighter towards this yellowish green region, that means a lot of pixel values are binned here. So for our green and blue channels, it looks like there's a very bright green with kind of a brighter blue as well. So it's probably something like your ocean water, your brighter pixel intensities towards like the bottom of the beach, the bottom of the beach image. That would be something maybe around in here towards the greenish color of the sea. And then here you have red values that are very, very low. And we already know from the flattened color histogram representation that red isn't expressed too much of this image. So that's why you see a lot of red, low red pixel values. And then you have a high value of your green bin to it. So that could be some of the greenery and the foliage, maybe along the tree trunk as well. And finally, for blue and red, there's very little red, as we know, but there's a high level of blue here because this is around what bin 20, between bin 20 and 25. So as you can see, that's how you go about looking at these kind of correlations between the each of the respective channels with the color histogram. Now you can also compute a 3D histogram. It's kind of a pain to visualize and we don't often you know, visualize color histograms in three dimensions. So instead, what that's often used for as an image descriptor, which is quantifying the contents, the color of an input image, the color distribution of the image, such that you know if we wanted to build that fashion search engine that I was talking about before, well, this will give us the number of times like a given RG, red, green, and blue pixel value hat falls within a specific range. So let's look how we compute that histogram. We pass in the original input image, and we want to compute color histograms for the zeroth, the one, and the second channel, so each of the red, green, and blue channels. We don't have a mask, so that's set to none. And then each of these channels, we want to compute eight bins each. So we're going to end up with this eight by eight by eight histogram, and each of the pixel intensities ranges will fall between zero and 256. We then display the shape of that histogram to our screen. So when I run that script, what I get is a 3D histogram, which is eight by eight by eight, and multiplied out, that means that histogram has 512 values.